so we are still making head in the Department of Sedimentation. We're, uh, we're covering some ground, and it's good. And all we really have left is to discuss uh, the electrophoresis and the isoelectric focusing. And really, electrophoresis and gel electrophoresis have the same ideas to them. And what I really want to do before is just a little bit of clarification with regards to sedimentation equilibrium. And what, what I mentioned before is that the sedimentation constant and the diffusion constant or the sedimentation and diffusion methods, they both relate in some way to the foreign factor. And this is really the property of the molecule. It's radius, it's viscosity, et cetera, et cetera. And what's important to understand, what's important to understand is let me just draw a vial here real quick. And I have a particle here. And I know that in sedimentation equilibrium, it's not moving anywhere. It's not moving anywhere because the diffusion force pulling on one side is being balanced by the centrifugal force pushing on the other side. So really, there's no movement of this molecule around to the right or to the left or in any direction, really, across this line. So it means that the form factor is not really in effect. It means there's, the form factor isn't influencing this process. And what do I mean by that? When do the form factor really, really influence? When does it influence? If I have a big fat molecule and a smaller molecule, and they're in motion, if they're in motion, there's some sort of forces, like the friction force that is, that is applying on them in different directions. So the size and the property of the molecule as far as size and viscosity, radius and viscosity, plays a role when it's moving around because it, other forces are in effect that are bothering it, you can say, maybe friction from other molecules. So really, when this molecule is not moving anywhere, when this molecule is not moving anywhere, and it stays on a certain line, the size, the shape, the viscosity, they don't matter because it's not moving anywhere. These forces do not, do not apply to it. So what I really mean to say is that the foreign factor is not really something that we bother ourselves with sedimentation equilibrium. And I do believe there's a minimal on it, which really states the sedimentation equilibrium, it, the foreign factor is not in effect or something along these lines. And that's what they mean. When the molecule is not moving, its shape and its viscosity, they, they really don't matter. Hopefully, this made a little bit of sense. And we're going to dive into electrophoresis. And as the name applies, I'm going to use electricity. And being that we're talking about sedimentation, I'm going to use it to separate molecules from one another based on their charge and based on their mass. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to have a negatively charged electrode, uh, sorry, a positively charged electrode and a negatively charged electrode, and I'm going to have different molecules inside. I'm going to have different molecules here, 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 here. And they're all going to have some sort of charged affinity. This one may be, may be positive. This one may be very, very positive. This one may be negative. This one may be negative. This one may be very, very negative. This one may be uh, very slightly negative, let's say. <clears throat> and when you're thinking about it, if I induce a magnetic field, they're going to gravitate. They're going to move towards their preferable charge. This positive guy is going to advance towards the negatively charged electrode. And this positive guy is also maybe going to make some way here. This negative guy is want to go over there. And also, these two negatively charged particles want to go over here. <laughs> so really, what we're talking about is some sort of mobility that these guys are going to experience. They're going to move around. And really, to what extent are they going to move around? Well, first of all, the more charged the, more charged the molecule is, the more it's going to move, or the faster it's going to move, or the more ground it's going to cover. So this guy is, is not only very, very positively charged, it's also very, very small. So the form factor is also affecting it. The form factor is always also affecting it, form factor. What I mean by that is the bigger the molecule, the harder it's going to be for it to move around. So the lesser the, its mobility is going to be. But the charge, the more charged it is, the more mobile it's going to be. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some arrows here. Charge, the mobility goes up. Charge goes up, mobility goes up. Foreign factor goes up, mobility goes down. Mobility goes down. So that really means that this guy that's very positively charged and very, very small is probably going to get further ahead than this guy that is, that is also uh, positively charged, but maybe less positively charged. It's also really, really fat. So its mobility is going to be considerably lesser than this guy right here. And, and I al already mentioned electrophoretic mobility. Electrophoretic mobility. And what do I mean by that? What is this mobility? What is this whole, whole very seemingly complicated, uh, seemingly complicated gas? Really, this is pretty simple. What it means 
is that there's some sort of mobility that is associated with these little guys when I place them in some sort of electric field. And the electro electrophoretic mobility is the velocity, velocity gain. This is just my own my own explanation. Velocity gained by a particle when introduced introduced to a magnetic to an sorry to an electric 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 so when there's some sort of electric field that is uh, introduced into this solution of these whole particles here, they're going to gain mobility. And this is electrophoretic mobility. This is what they really need. And there's only one more thing that we need to understand with respect to electrophoretic mobility, is that not only are they going to move based on their, on their charge, they're also going to move based on their mass. And basically a more massive particle is going to, to move around less Less efficiently, you can say. A fatter molecule is going to be is going to experience a, a lesser mobility, you can say. So there's some sort of charge to mass ratio. And they're going to be separated by charge to mass ratio. And I only brought this up because I think it's the best way to describe electrophoresis. And if I were to ask, uh, I were asked to describe electrophoresis and let's just say an open essay question, I would say that molecules placed in an electric field are separated based on this charge to mass ratio that they have. And I would also say uh, charge goes up, mobility goes up. I'm, I'll make it a little bit more academic than just saying that. And there's one more thing that we need to consider that may affect the electrophoretic mobility is the pH. pH will affect the electrophoresis because we should know by now that different proteins have different forms or different ionic forms, maybe cations, anions, in different pHs because we know that one molecule at, at a certain pH maybe will be a cation and maybe when that pH changes drastically it will turn into its anion form and that's because of the carboxylic terminal and the and the uh, Mi terminal and really I'm not going to deal with chemistry here at all but all really, you really need to know is that pH does make a difference in electrophoresis. So we've defined what electrophoretic mobility is We've defined electrophoresis. We've defined all the relationship it has. And really, if you can expect some sort of question in an exam, I, I'm quite satisfied that we covered most of what's necessary, if not all of what's necessary. And now we're going to talk about a very simple idea, which is the, electro, uh, the isoelectric focusing. Isoelectric focusing basically says, and it's really, really simple, and I'm not going to, to get into the chemistry side. This you can do on your own. If I have a negative, this is a very weird shape for an electrode, but go with me. If I have the negative and positive, uh, and positive um, electrodes, what I can do is I can create some sort of solution that has a pH gradient. And by pH gradient, really, I mean I can split it to areas where the pH is, obviously, they're going to be straight lines. You know what? Let, let me just draw straight lines because it's getting ridiculous. My drawings are getting worse and worse by the minute. So I have straight lines. And maybe this is pH 4, this is pH, this is pH 4, maybe this, this is pH 5, pH 6, 7, and 8, etc., etc., etc. And I'm going to have some sort of molecules, some sort of proteins floating around. I have some proteins floating around, which is a rather big protein, but you get my drift. And I know the proteins have what we call an, an isoelectric point, an isoelectric point. And that isoelectric point is some sort of equilibrated point between their cation and anion form. And I mentioned that I'm not going to go into the chemistry. So what's really important to know here? What's important to know is when I have a pH gradient, gradient, important to know, when I have a pH gradient solution and I introduce it to an electric, electric, electric field, these guys are going to migrate to the pH of their isoelectric point, which really means that if this guy is in its isoelectric point at a certain pH, then uh, the certain pH is going to condone that isoelectric point. And what you really need to know is all the proteins of that specific type, maybe they're going to all, maybe they're all going to settle here. Basically, they're going to go to where they're comfortable. Maybe this, these proteins are all the same proteins. Let's just say they're all the same proteins. These proteins, maybe they want to be at this, at this pH gradient level right here. So basically, if I had to define <clears throat> what isoelectric focusing is, and again, I'm doing this in a very superficial level for your biophysics uh, purpose, 
but without getting into the chemistry of it. But really, what is isoelectric focusing? It's using a, a pH gradient solution or a pH gradient gel or a pH gradient environment in general, you can see, to separate proteins based on their isoelectric point. So proteins are going to migrate to the pH gradient or the area in which the pH complementary to their isoelectric point. And this is really isoelectric focusing. Not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Hopefully it made a little bit of sense. And I'll see you in the next video, hopefully trying to get some questions together for sedimentation.